Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is the sixth Sunday of Easter. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, that the Father will send in my name, he will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me tell you, I am going away, and I will come back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have, I, and now I have told you this before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, again, today on Sunday, uh, we're going into uh, the reading of the gospel because, number one, the Acts of the Apostles reading for Sunday is basically uh, something that has uh, has already been uh, covered in our daily masses. But also the Sunday gospel readings during Easter are beautiful, and they primarily come from the farewell discourse of Jesus in the upper room with his disciples at the Last Supper, covering all of the things that he was saying to them in preparation for his passion, death, and resurrection. And today, we have Jesus announcing to the disciples something remarkable. And he's beginning to introduce them to the idea that as he leaves them, that there is going to be one who would come to accompany them. And that is the Holy Spirit, whom Jesus calls the Advocate. And uh, again, the word advocate is in the Greek, the word parakaleo, which means the one who comes alongside. And so he's letting them know that uh, there is going to be one who will come alongside and be with them. And one of the things that they were going to learn is that not only is he going to come alongside uh, in a, uh, a tangible sense, but it's going to be an accompaniment that, that takes place in the inside, in the interior of their being, that it isn't just that he's going to be with them, he is going to be in them. And that basically he is going to come and continue to uh, help them to retain all that he has taught them and all that uh, he has shown them. And so there's going to be an advocate. And one of the things the advocate is going to bring is peace. He says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. And um, at that point, he really encourages them, don't let your hearts be troubled. And this isn't the, uh, the first time he said that. He said it at the very beginning of the discourse, don't let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. And so he's saying, look, don't worry. I've got you covered. The Holy Spirit is going to bring to be with you, and he is going to be the one through whom peace will be yours. One of the things when we talk about peace, we can think of peace as the absence of war, uh, which it is, but there's something more to peace than just that, and it's more than just having um, nothing happen that is negative. Uh, in fact, it, it is a very different thing because there can be a peace that passes all understanding, a peace that's in the midst of the storm, different terms like that, so that peace is not necessarily the absence of conflict. I love the way that uh, St. Augustine describes peace. Peace is, according to St. Augustine, tranquility in order. In other words, that when our lives are in order, there is tranquility. And that basically is what peace really is. It's a tranquility in the ordering of our lives, life. And uh, basically, he has three levels 
of tranquility or three levels of order. And the first one is order with respect to God and us, that we are in proper order with him. We have a proper relationship with him, that the appropriation of grace and strength that comes from God through the power of the Holy Spirit is ours uh, as a part of our sacramental bonding with him through the grace of our baptism and through the other sacraments being exercised, in addition to the developing of our personal relationship with him, which comes from reading the scriptures, from prayer, and other means. So there's the ordering our life in God. The second one is the ordering of ourself. And this really has to do with the ordering of the human person, that we are in proper relationship with ourselves, that there is uh, issues of... um, interior life that have been dealt with. There's a proper acceptance of self. And there's so many different ways in which the ordering of ourself can take place that truly uh, we need to be at peace with ourselves, with who we are and, and how God has created us. And this, again, is a working of grace that can come from the Holy Spirit. The third is the ordering of with others, that we are in proper order with others. This, again, is where, you know, love your neighbor as yourself. We have to be in that love relationship uh, with each other. Part of that is uh, that we don't hold uh, unforgiveness in our hearts, but we choose to forgive so that there is an ordering of a relationship with those who perhaps are at enmity with us. There are other ways in which we need to be at order with each other in terms of uh, things that St. Paul himself would talk to us about in his epistles, that uh, if someone has something against us, go and make it right. So that if somebody is holding unforgiveness toward us, we need to initiate forgiveness. We need to work for the good of others. And remember that uh, love for another is a love that has the intention of the good for the other person. So these are things involved in the peace that he's talking about. So these are some of the early statements that Jesus makes in the upper room as he prepares the apostles and the other disciples, not only for his passion and death and resurrection, but also for the life that will be theirs after Pentecost when the Holy Spirit comes upon them. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, we are beginning the sixth week of Easter together. And I look forward again tomorrow, uh, the Lord willing, to being together for another edition of Day by Day. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.